So there is more to Azure IoT Edge than the typical Vision AI model running on the device to recognize objects. What if I told you it enables you to play Flappy Bird on the digital sign while you wait for your bus? And that's exactly what Andreas uh, from Ombori Grid uh, is here to show us and how that works. A very nice demo and way more than just Flappy Bird at the end of the day. And that's today on the IoT Show. Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining us on the IoT Show. I'm Olivier, your host. Today, you're here to hear about IoT Edge and how it's used to enhance digital science experience and bridging IoT screens and mobile with Ombury Grid. And for that, I have Andreas with me today. Andreas, how are you? Hello, Olivier. I'm great, thanks. How are you? I'm fantastic. So where are you calling us from? Stockholm, Sweden, actually. OK, awesome. So tell me a little bit about yourself. What's your background in IoT? How long have you been in that business? And then we'll talk about Ombori and Ombori Greed, which is a great solution you came here to show us. Well, uh, I've been working with uh, IoT and uh, Edge Compute for the past, I think, four, three or four years now, while we have been building the Ombori Grid uh, platform. OK. So. I know you guys are using Microsoft Technologies. That's why you're here. Uh, and um, the interesting thing is that when we talk about Azure IoT Edge, which is our runtime to bring workloads from the cloud to the edge, we very often just bring up the Vision AI demo, right? And it's like, hey, you can do Vision AI on that Edge device. But in reality, lots of people are using IoT Edge for, for various other reasons than just the ability of running some AI model at the edge. And you're here to tell us about uh, how Ombori Greed is using and leveraging IT Edge, among other things. But I think we are seeing that screen behind you. So we, we have kind of a hint that it's going to be about digital science and technologies related to it. So let's get into that. Tell us about Ombori and Ombori Greed. What is it? Uh, how did you, did you come to, to create that solution? Uh, and then we'll talk about details and we'll see a nice demo. Absolutely. So um, it's, it's a quite fun story, actually, but I'll keep it, keep it short. But um, when we started building the Umbori Grid, we started to create a app management platform, and we focused on the mobile experience, actually. But we did a collaboration with H&M and Microsoft a few years back, which kind of went viral with a, with a talking mirror. And a lot of kinds of clients started calling us and asking us to help with innovation in the physical space, creating a really great customer experience and also employee experience. And uh, we started extending our platform to be more fit for those kind of use cases. And that's when we adopted the IoT Edge platform to do all of our device management and everything that's happening out, out on the Edge compute. Interesting. We'll see that, we'll see that during the demos. Um, there's, there's one thing that struck me that you know we at Microsoft here, especially in the IoT team, we're kind of biased, right? We see IoT Edge every day and so on. Um, tell me a bit about. How are digital science and the, I would say the smarter ones these days, uh, are they developed? What is the technology that are used uh, in there? Yeah, I mean, there are a lot of web frameworks happening when it comes to the, the digital signage development. But something that, that we have been focusing on is not so much the sign itself, but more how can we create this digital journey both for the employees and for, for the visitors. And uh, you know, it goes so much way beyond what is happening on the screen. Sure, having big screens like this are, are great because they are attention grabbing and they can educate the visitor to a space about what kind of possibilities there are. But we always try to get on the, the visitor's device and how they can use their own phone to navigate the this, this space. And uh, to do that, you need to really bridge these three different areas, you know, with the digital screen, the IoT and how you have connected devices, and then uh, the mobile phone. It, does that make sense? It, it does make sense. And uh, I, I can see, because I've seen the demo already, I think people will realize that when we jump in there, this bridging that is made possible through the cloud, because 
you don't want to have a consumer connect their device directly to an unknown digital sign, right? From the you know uh, privacy perspective, security perspective, like bidirectionally, you don't want them to connect, and they don't want that digital sign to have access directly to their device. So you definitely need to have this intermediary that is, in that case, the, the cloud. Um, so I like it. How about you show us, and because we have developers here watching us, um, I'd like for you to bring up the CLI as well and show us you know, uh, how the solution looks like and how it's used. No, I'd, I'd be happy to, and uh, I can actually share my screen and maybe walk you, walk you through it. Because, I mean, we are building everything on, on Azure. Uh, the whole onboard grid platform is, is powered by Microsoft App, Azure and can be connected to, to your own Azure tenant as well. But uh, the tools take some time to kind of use and leverage in the best way when you really want to focus on the experience. So what we have done is that we have streamlined everything when it comes to device provisioning and uh, onboarding and, and so on, just so that you can get straight into building your edge modules, your mobile apps or the digital screen apps, and everything just works and you have the real-time communication between the three. So that's nice, what I want nice. to show. I, I love that because we deliver to our partners like you a layer that allows you not to have to reinvent the wheel for all the module management and connecting the device to the cloud and, and so on. And you're adding another layer for your customers in the realm of digital science and smart digital science so that they don't have to do that additional set of things that are common and generic in that in that space. So I, I think it, it makes sense. I like the layering. I think it's it's uh it's very um you know explicit for people to understand oh, and, to, and to grasp, right? Exactly, and I mean, we have customers that, uh, you know, they have no concept of Azure or the Azure services and they just mm -hmm. interact with our platform. But we also have a lot of customers that really are deep into the whole Azure ecosystem and then connects their existing services to what is happening in Onboard Grid. So the whole Azure connection really is present there under the, the surface. Love it. The first option to get started is to just go to our website, onboard.com slash grid enter your email address and off you go. The other option, if you're already on Azure, you just go to the Azure portal, search for Onbori, and you can find it in the marketplace and you can just install it and, and use it as any other Azure service. Perfect. Once you have this set up, you will end up in what we call the Onbori Grid console. So mm -hmm. here we have a marketplace with ready to use apps that you can just install and, and uh, configure without any kind of coding. But we also have these developer tools, and that's what I want to focus on today. So if you hop on to developer.onboardgrid.com, you have the, the documentation, how to do screen app development, IoT app development, how to use the CLI, and so on. Nice. And the demo I want to share with you today is how to run Flappy Bird on a big screen with your mobile phone as a remote. Of course, who doesn't want to play Flappy Bird on a big digital sign, right? Exactly. And and uh, building this, we spent way too many hours in the office <laughs> playing it, and I'd like to admit as well. You have to test um, it. <laughs> yeah, we, we have to test it. So the instructions here are kind of step by step. It's a screen application and a mobile application with real-time communication. So we're going to go straight into the GitHub repository which is a fork from the original open source JavaScript Flappy Bird. There's a link back to the original if you want to check that out. But here we have our version with the mobile app and the screen app. And I'm just going to clone that repo. There we go. And in here, you see we have the mobile app and the screen app. So let's start with the mobile app. I'm going to run a yarn to get all my dependencies installed. Nice. Well, it's doing that because it's going to take a little time. So we we saw the marketplace. And in the marketplace, we're mentioning apps that could be pre-installed. And yeah. if I understand correctly, these apps are different things, right? There is a, a, a part of the app which is running on the digital sign device, which delivers the experience. And then there's another part which could be the mobile app that the user is using to interact with that digital sign, right? So these are packaged as what we what do you call apps into your marketplace, correct? Absolutely correct. So we, we say that we have cloud apps, IoT apps, screen apps, and mobile apps. And okay. uh, one example, um, when COVID hit, a lot of our customers asked us to help with that situation. 
So we repurposed our queuing solution, which is a, a cloud application to have digital signs that show occupancy in real time. And if I scan a QR code, I would get the ticket on my phone. And that ticket oh. could even be used to just, you know, scan it to open a physical gate to give me entrance to, to the space. And that's a very good kind of showcase of this interaction in real time between cloud, screens, IoT, and phones. Totally, totally. Great example for sure. So just going to set up my Visual Studio code here. Demo gods, right? There we go. So here. Yes, have... you trust yourself, right? <laughs> <laughs> I do trust myself, yes. But I like so, this new feature, right? It's a recent feature in code that uh, allows you to, to acknowledge that the source of the code is, is something you trust. I like that. It's very handy, actually. Um, so now I've opened up the, the repository here. So you see we have the mobile app and the screen application. I just installed the uh, dependencies for the mobile app. While we're looking at that, I will do the same for the screen app so that we save some time for the next step. Yeah. Uh, In that case, the screen app is a uh, IoTH module, correct? Yeah, so, so both the mobile app and the screen apps are actually just HTML5 web applications. Okay. Um, in this case, they're written in, in React. But what is actually going to play these on a screen is this IoT Edge container that you see behind me, which is here just playing a, a video. So we will be deploying this application out, up on uh, IoT Edge, uh, actually. Got it. So you basically are using a, a pre-installed module uh, in the IoT Edge realm that will be set up remotely from IoT Hub to deploy a, a web app that's going to be the, the front end, basically, of the, of the device. Exactly. OK. Yes. If we are looking at the code here of the mobile application, it's actually really simple. Because when you're playing Flappy Bird, the only thing you really need to do is to flap. So this React code has one button, which is called flap. And that is going to publish the event on the Onbori grid, which is flap. But it is also subscribing to events from the screen application, which is game over and game started. So that it is aware of the state of the screen application at all times, but then it can send the, the command to, to flap. Does that make sense? Yeah, it, it does make sense. So I see that entity, the application is going to interact um, with, with these two guys, the screen and the mobile. And yeah, it does make sense. You have these pipes of communication, a command that goes down, an event that comes up, and then you have to write all of that. Yeah, exactly. And you have a few modules here, which are, I think, quite interesting. One is use settings from Onbori Grid App Settings. Um, and the other one is the actual messaging library, which is called GA Messaging where you have these uh, components that you can just use to uh, send and subscribe to the events. And all of the complexity and the, the security around this is just abstracted away from you as a developer so that you can only focus on, on creating the, the good customer experiences. And when it comes to use settings, this is another thing. Because if you are building an application or if we are looking at our marketplace applications, um, if you have, like, let's say that you're a retailer and you have multiple stores, you won't have the same settings necessarily throughout all stores. You want to mm -hmm. change different things. So yeah. you can choose uh, as a developer what options your, let's say, store managers or non-technical people should be able to change for each installation in the grid console. And you do that by defining this, this schema. And this is like a very simple schema for the mobile application, which basically says, you know, do nothing. It's a better example if we hop over to the screen application and we look at the schema which is defined for that, because here we have three values, which we very soon will we'll see how we use in the grid console. But it is where can I find the remote? Like what's the URL of the remote? What is the gravity of the bird? What is the gap between the, the pipes of the flappy mm -hmm. bird game? And what is the thrust? So if I deploy this to different screens, I can have completely different games by just changing these parameters in the grid console. Got it. And if you're looking at the code for the screen application, you can see that we have abstracted away the original game into one single React component here, which we call game. 
And it's also just loading the GA messaging library and the GA settings library with use settings. And then you see that we will get uh, all of the values like gravity, gap, and thrust from the grid console and this instance of the application, um, which I think is pretty cool. And what you will also see is that how you develop these screen applications and how you develop the, the mobile applications, they just follow all the same patterns. They use the same libraries. It's really easy to, to kind of use your experience with the grid for both mobile applications and screen applications and messaging and everything just works the way you expect. Yeah, well, I like that. Because at the end of the day, when you're a developer um, building these kind of apps, it's like you were talking with another module of your app or a, an app on the same device next to it or, or not. So it, it makes things super simple for them. Yeah, exactly. And now we're looking at the mobile app and the screen app. But if I was creating, let's say, an edge module, I would have access to the same libraries and I can just publish and subscribe to the same events, which is really cool. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you can create a scenario like when you press a button on your phone, it opens a gate through an edge module, for example. Yeah, it's not just about a display or displaying something on the screen. It's really about interacting with your environment. Exactly. And, and also, when, when you're building these typical IoT Edge uh, examples, like um, you know um, a vision algorithm or something, when you detect certain events, you can publish them so that the screens and the phones can react in real time to whatever they are detecting. Yeah, yeah. And, and now we can bring in our Vision AI module, right? Exactly. <laughs> that exactly. we always see on an edge device, yeah. Yes. Well, let's see how it all works. Uh, let's see how yeah. you deploy that and, and you make it work. Let's deploy it. So going back here to our grid console, in addition to the public apps, we also have your apps. And here uh, we see that apps for this tenant, this is empty. So we want to put something here. But the first thing I need to do is that I need to enter my tenant name in the config because the onboarding grid CLI needs to know where to publish this. And we see that my tenant name here is AH demo one. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to go into my package JSON and replace my org with AH demo one for both the screen app and for my mobile app. There we go. Then we can hop back to our CLI. And I'm going to do yarn build and yarn pub, which is obviously short for publish. Yep. So what it's doing here now is that it's creating um, a .grid app file, which is the full application build. And it's going to publish that to my tenant so it becomes available for me to actually install. The build is successful and now it's publishing. And our release is created. So if we go back then to the grid console and we just reload my apps, we see that apps for this tenant, we now have Flappy Bird screen application here and I can install that if I want. Nice. So basically you have here the developer basically shipped an app and then an operator of the solution can just now find it there and say, Hey, I want to deploy on this screens there to deliver that experience. Okay. Exactly like that. Exactly yeah. like that. Um, let's do the same for the mobile app. And then we can take a look at how we actually install and, and deploy these. While the mobile app is building and deploying, we can just start that process. So here now I'm going to press install on the Flappy Bird screen app. And I'm going to give this happy test screen, we can call it. And press OK. Now we see it pops up under my installations here. And then it shows me which devices this is running on. So this is what IoT Edge devices um, do I have available? And we see that none, none of the devices are currently connected to this installation. So of course, we want to connect that device. So okay. Press connect. And here I can see uh, devices, IoT Edge devices, which are already running in this tenant. And if I press on one of them, it's going to move that over from that previous installation to the one we just created. 
but it's also really easy to set up completely new devices. And this is something that we're really proud of, actually. So if you have an Intel NUC, for example, or if you have a Raspberry Pi or something like that, you can just choose the device type and you can download the image, uh, just put it on a USB stick and flash it. And, uh, oh. you know, getting that up and running is as simple as just entering the serial number here or scanning the QR code on the device. So if you're doing this as a, you know, a development um, uh, playground, probably you will want to use the, the QR code. But if you are provisioning like hundreds of thousands of devices into production environments, just getting a list of serial numbers is, is much easier <laughs> when you want to add oh. a lot at once. Yeah, no, I love that. I love that. So that's really abstract. And I was about to ask you, are you guys in the business of, of the device itself uh, as a solution? But it seems like you can take what, some of the generic ones that are out there. And I guess the list you have here is the most commonly used uh, hardware for powering digital science. Yeah, absolutely. And, and I mean, we have, you know, uh, we support most kind of device types. If it's uh, any kind of Intel hardware, it, this image typically use right right away. Raspberry mm -hmm. Pi 4 is also IoT Edge uh, powered. The other devices are not IoT Edge, so you can't run, you can only run Edge containers or Edge modules on the Raspberry Pi and the Intel image. Got but you, yeah. you can manage the screen applications through IoT Hub with these other uh, device types. OK, OK. Um, cool. Let's see if the mobile has finished building. It has. So I suggest that we go back to the marketplace, my apps, and we install the Flappy mobile remote. Let me call OK. What we can see here is that every content update, if, if you want, is actually a build and deploy uh, of that version of, of the app. And if I go to content, you will see that the setting schema that we created in the repository is actually rendered here. And there's not so many interesting settings on the remote, but if we go to the, the screen and then go to the content tab, here we see that uh, mm. you can change the gravity, pipe gap, flap acceleration, and so on. And okay. it also gives me the option to choose the mobile endpoint. And because we have installed this now Flappy Mobile Remote, I can just choose this one. And then they will be able to discover each other for that communication. OK. So I'm going to save that. And I'm going to press Publish. I want to publish this to production. Yes. And then I can see the progress of how this is done building and deploying this application. What do you think? I, I love it. I mean, this is pretty straightforward. Um, developer does his work as a developer, and then the operator just have to click buttons on a UI, and pretty straightforward and intuitive. Um, and you know, then they can deploy that. One thing that I really like as well is when we talk about digital science, um, you know, the perception that people might have is that uh, it kind of just works or worst case or, or even worse, that it's just a web app that grabs the data from a website. And, and so the, the sign itself is pretty dumb. Here, yeah. here we're talking about something that is, uh, is um, customizable pretty easily by an operator where you can deliver an experience. I think that you have the scenario where, um, you know, based on the location of a specific screen in an event, you can also uh, design the experience to be dynamic, uh, you know, and maybe it's something, I don't know if you can show it now but while it's deploying the Flappy Bird app uh, and, and show us what more an operator can do thanks to uh, onboard agreed uh, when it comes to making that experience, that digital experience more interactive. Absolutely. Um... I think one one of the one of the coolest thing with with uh, the onboard grid is that in addition to being able to create your own setting schemas, you also have all of the the media management, right? Just like mm -hmm. any other kind of um, digital signage platform, you can manage your your um, devices and your files. One of the mm -hmm. things that we have actually spent a lot of time on is you mentioned this that you know there's, there's a per perception that when you put uh let's say interactive uh content on a digital screen what you're doing is just loading a web page url essentially on the screen right 
But what is actually happening here is that the application is deployed out to the device. So this is not just loading a website. It's actually running locally. So this everything that you see on the screen will keep working even if the device suddenly loses connectivity or something. Obviously, you won't have the real-time communication with the mobile phone and so on, but you won't end up with black screens just because you have a intermittent connectivity issue or something like that. Yeah, it makes sense. So if we go back to the screen, we see the build has completed here. And let's connect this screen that we have behind me, actually. So we go here, connect device. One thing which I think is quite nice is that you see the CPU usage, memory usage of the IoT Edge device at all times. Yep. Uh, I will confirm that I want to deploy it. And now it pops up here. You will see it's going to start loading the app. We have the wrong orientation. So we can open in here and I will go into modules. Here we can see the modules that are deployed to the, the device. So I'm going to change the orientation of the screen module. Press save. You see it updates in real time. Yeah, let's see your screen now, because we're we're just seeing your, your demo screen right now. Let's see our camera so that we can see what's going on. OK, so now yeah. it's deployed on that screen here. Um, yes. And can you actually, I want to challenge you, can you change the, right, the, the orientation again so we see live? Because we didn't see it. So Yeah, absolutely. So people realize what's going on here. I'm going to put this in landscape, press Save Changes. Oh, OK. And and that that person who's doing the operation is not even in front of that screen, right? They can be remote because they are interacting through a web page here uh, and and uh, the dashboard itself. Yes. Okay. Now you have to play with it, man. You have to show us what's going on. <laughs> okay. I'll try. So I'm gonna open up just the camera on my phone, and I will scan the QR code, and it's loading here. So if you see my phone now, you see mm -hmm. you have one button that says flap. Yep. And of course, we have to press that. Yeah. Hard enough, right? Yeah. Look at you. Look at this. Easy. Nice. And I see, see there, too much. And I see, Andreas, they, so that's something that there's many pipes that be, be like pun intended with the game. There's many, many pipes, right? There's the, 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 the mobile app, which is basically a web app. Uh, yeah. And you're interacting with it, goes to the back end, back end talks back to the screen, uh, you know, through the cloud uh, yeah. and so applies a command. So there is a little lag. It's something that is not, oh, yeah, game the, over. The mobile app keeps the state from the screen at all times, right? So now the yep. device just says that you have died. And if I press, again hopefully you can see a bit of the screen in the back and you reset and there you go this is very yeah. low latency on these things which actually makes I... it playable <laughs> Yeah, exactly. That's what I was, I was about to say. You know, there's so many pipes, and it seems like the, intuitively you would say as a developer, well, that's going to be laggy for sure. Like, you know, suddenly network goes down or slows down or many people are on the, the Wi-Fi yep. or whatnot. But at the end of the day, because you're using IoT technologies for the connectivity of that, of that digital sign to the cloud, you're already saving lots because that communication is optimized for IoT devices. And so you're, you're, you're already saving yourself the hassle of going through the usual pipes of HTTP for web. And, and here you're really going through the IoT channels, basically. Yeah, exactly. And because the, the device is also authenticated with its own unique certificate, thanks to the device provisioning service and all these things, uh, like. As a developer, you don't need to think about how do I authenticate these different things and set up the, the real-time communication. You just use those libraries that I showed you before. If we switch back to my, my screen quickly um, here. So just importing onboard GA, message, GA messaging is all you need to do because all of the connectivity, the, the uh, authorization, and, and so on is, is managed by the onboard grid in the, the backend. So it's completely abstracted away from, from you as a developer. Love it. Love it. Pretty good and straightforward. So, Andreas, I think 
Well, you did the demo all the way through. You had a digital sign that was just showing a video uh, and you were able to very easily and rapidly create an application based on a template, but you know, it's React, so it's pretty straightforward for, for developers out there to, to build this kind of experiences. Deploy remotely, control, parameter and so on. So that's pretty brilliant and, and shows the power of uh, Onboard Grid. Uh, so that's, well, thanks to that, Andreas. Uh, for our audience, if they want to learn more, they can go to onbori.com. Uh, you say slash grid, that will land them in the right place. So onbori.com, that's the website. But do you have something more for people watching this video if they want to get some freebies, right? Yeah, exactly. So I have, I have two things. First of all, one feature that I forgot to mention, which is actually okay. quite quite important. You saw me using the, the OMG, like Onbori Grid CLI. To, Which is to, the best, um, by the way, the best command line command ever. OMG, <laughs> definitely. You cannot forget that one. No, I, exactly. And and the fact is that I, as a developer, I'm not a big fan of using these portals. That's more for, for the, the uh, operators, as you call it, right? So yep. I can control almost every aspect of the onboard grid through the CLI. So I nice. can list my devices. I can open a remote shell to it. I can even open a re remote JavaScript terminal to like debug what's going on in the screen. I mm -hmm. can even open a VNC instance to actually mirror what is going on on my screen to my computer and everything without worrying about, you know, authentication or ports or stuff like that, which is pretty cool. It is. It is. Yeah. Uh, and as for a freebie, yes, um, we have some some fun surprise here because if you sign up for the onboard grid, first of all, uh, first three devices are always free because we want uh, developers to be able to use this to play with it without you know any any cost whatsoever but if yeah. you want to try the the different paid marketplace solutions out or you know go crazy with a lot of devices uh, you will actually get 250 dollars free um, if you use the code um, microsoft developer microsoft developer in one word all lower, lowercase one word we'll all lowercase, yes We'll we'll add that in the description. Uh, Microsoft Developer is your code for getting uh, freebies from Mumbori. That's awesome. Thanks, Andreas. Um, and well, maybe we'll see you again on the IT show at some point. Uh, hey, everyone, thanks for tuning in. Have a great day, and uh, looking forward to see you soon on the IT show. Bye bye. Thanks, Olivia. Bye bye, everyone. <laughs>